You're listening to Lake Effect on 89.7 WUWM. I'm Audrey Nowakowski. Each month on Lake Effect, we help you plan a trip right here in our home state in our series, Wandering Wisconsin. But this month, we're going to do things a little differently. Rather than help you plan a trip to one Wisconsin destination, we're going to help you actually plan a road trip. Wisconsin has a handful of scenic byways, and today we'll learn about the Great River Road that snakes along the Mississippi River on the western edge of the state. Sherry Kwame is the chairperson of the Wisconsin-Mississippi River Parkway Commission. She joins Lake Effect's Becky Mortensen, along with Travel Wisconsin's Amanda Weibel, to share what there is to see on the road. So, Sherry, before we get into what people can do and see along the Great River Road, let's talk about how this route was established. I understand it started back in the 1930s. It did. It was the state of Missouri, the show me state, that said we need to do something to really feature our Mississippi River and how it connects not only to Missouri, but to all of the states that border the river. And so they started talking about creating a national Great River Road. It really caught on. And the other states jumped on the bandwagon. Um, So did Canada, as a matter of fact, and the province of Ontario at that time. They started talking with their congressional delegations. And in 1937, 1938, Congress, in fact, established a Great River Road program. Following that, each state then enacted legislation and established a state Great River Road Commission, and the rest is history. Okay, so walk us through this route. It's on the western edge of Wisconsin. So what communities does it go through? Well, it is an exciting 250-mile route in Wisconsin, and at the southernmost point, it is as you cross over from Galena, Illinois into Wisconsin or um, from Dubuque, Iowa, across the Mississippi River there and enter Wisconsin at the little village of Keeler. And as you come north, it travels all the way to our northernmost point, which is Prescott, Wisconsin, directly across from Minneapolis, St. Paul. Many communities that you have to choose from as destinations, places to stop, places to explore. Yeah, let's get into some of those things. What are some of the must-do stops on this route? Well, I'm going to start at our southernmost point, and we are eight counties strong. 33 communities, we call them our string of pearls. So we are Grant, Crawford, Vernon, La Crosse counties, Trempolo, Buffalo County, Pepin, and Pierce County. But you know, travelers don't necessarily think about county borders. They're looking at their map, they're Googling what to do, where to go. And one place that you want to start with if you're starting at the south is in Potosi. The village of Potosi is absolutely marvelous. They have formed a foundation and they rebuilt the Potosi Brewery into not only a functioning classic brewery, but a brewery museum. It's the National Brewery Museum. And when you go into the brewery museum, you will see not only uh, the relics of past brewing operations around the the nation, but you will see how the um, beer, for instance, was cooled In the caves, the actual real caves are there, and the underground river that flows under the building, you see that, and that's how they cooled um, their kegs uh, without refrigeration in the the years of prohibition. That's probably where they hid their, their kegs as well, I'm sure. So that's a place to stop. Cassville is right up the road, 11 miles. And in the summer, the Cassville Ferry, our Mississippi River's only operating ferry, will take you across the Mississippi River over to Iowa. You can explore there, but please come back real quickly. And then you want to get to uh, your next community. Uh, But before you do, be sure that you stop at Stonefield, which is the state historic site. And that historic site is where you have an agricultural museum. Um, You see uh, the community as our towns existed back in the 1930s. And you get the feel of being in rural America, plus uh, Governor Dewey State Park and Governor Dewey's home is there. Then I want to bring you up to Wyalusing State Park and historic Perdachine. 
And Prairie du Chien, of course, is where the Villa Louis, uh, former home uh, in the Victorian design, fully rebuilt, refurbished. It's just gorgeous. Your guides are in costume, period dress, all very authentic. So that's a little taste of what you might find in the South. Would you like to travel a little further? Yeah, let's do it. All right. I will tell you that if you're in Prairie du Chien, you will also want to see the uh, Fort Crawford, another interpretive center. And if you're looking for something to do in Prairie du Chien, June 13th through the 16th this year, the Civil War reenactment um, happens. And in September, uh, they have the Carriage Classic. Get your pizza at Muddy Waters, stop at Pete's Hamburger Stand, and enjoy, you know, a full day there. You might travel to the village of Ferryville, um, DeSoto, Genoa, Stoddard, all river towns coming up the Great River Road, Highway 35 to the north, reaching La Crosse. And all along the way, you are parallel to the river. You will see eagles, you will see herons, you will see all kinds of wildlife, probably beaver lodges, things that you might not normally recognize or see, but have your binoculars along because that makes this trip really fun as well. And Amanda does know I'm a big fan of unique destinations. So what are some of the more unusual things you can do, places you can stop? Fun things that I've got on my list would be, first of all, to stop at a wonderful place in Fountain City called Kinstone. Kinstone is a megalithic garden that is really inspired with stone constructions, much like Stonehenge in England. It is high on the bluff that overlooks the Mississippi River. So that is an unusual and wonderful stop. Another favorite is to search out the fishing barge in Trempolo. And people that want to fish, get tired of the idea of fishing from shore, um, can be transported over to a fishing float on the river. And there's one in Trempolo, there's one in Genoa. You, But you don't have to have your, your bait, they'll provide it, or your tackle or your pole help you catch your fish. You'll also find that they'll grill you a hamburger or a hot dog or something to eat if you weren't prepared. So those are just fun, unusual things to do. So if people are making a road trip out of this, they'll need to stop to eat. Maybe they don't want to catch their own food. So what are some restaurants you might recommend for people to check out? I love the Golden Frog and the Monarch Public House in Fountain City. The Monarch Public House is the oldest continually operating tavern in Wisconsin. The Golden Frog, when you walk in, you'll see that there are the imprints of frogs that have walked on the floor to get you and guide you to your table. Uh, wonderful, welcoming people. So it's a lot of fun. The other place that I just highly recommend is Stockholm Pie in Stockholm, Wisconsin, population 67. Stockholm Pie and General Store is absolutely a must stop. Pickle Factory in Pepin, Wisconsin is also another really fun place. And with that name, you'll just never forget it. It sounds like there is so much to do and see on the Great River Road, but we do have a couple other scenic byways in Wisconsin. So, Amanda, can you share a bit about those other options? Yes, Wisconsin really is a road tripper's dream. In addition to the Wisconsin Great River Road, we have two other federally designated scenic byways. We have the Wisconsin Lake Superior Scenic Byway, which is located on the Bayfield Peninsula, and that route meanders through scenic forests, it goes past sandy beaches, and along the coast of the world's largest lake, if you didn't know that about Lake Superior. You're also going to find just so many reasons to stop and get out and explore along that route. Then we have the Door County Coastal Byway, which circles the Door Peninsula for 66 miles. It's dotted with state parks, quaint shoreside communities, and of course, many scenic vistas of Lake Michigan. And then Wisconsin has two state designated scenic byways. The Lower Wisconsin River Road follows the Wisconsin River from Lodi to Prairie du Chien on Scenic Highway 60. And in the Northwoods, you can cruise through the heart of Wisconsin's National Forest on the Nicolay Wolf River Scenic Byway. So no matter which direction you go, we've got great options for great road trip getaways. 
And if you really want to get away and explore some of the lesser traveled parts of the state, there are rustic roads. Amanda, can you talk about the rustic roads program? This is such a neat program. The Wisconsin Department of Transportation gives rustic road designations to lightly traveled scenic country roads. And these roads have to have a maximum speed of 45 miles per hour. So it's really not just about getting from point A to point B when you're taking the rustic road. It's a chance to leisurely travel around some of our most scenic countryside. Some of the rustic roads also have adjacent hiking and biking paths so you can get out and explore a little bit further. But in total, the rustic road uh, system spans 760 miles in 61 counties. They're really easy to identify. They have these distinct brown and yellow signs. So definitely keep an eye out for them next time you're out and about. And you can plan a trip specifically to travel a rustic road. Or if you happen upon one, it can be a nice surprise to take as you travel through Wisconsin. And that program has been around for 51 years, but it keeps growing. Just this year, there were two new routes that earned the designation. So now Wisconsin has a total of 126 rustic roads. There's really something freeing about taking a road trip and kind of leaving plans behind at home and just going with the flow on the road. So for both of you, why would you encourage people to take a road trip this summer on the Great River Road or one of these other great byways we talked about? I would just say that the Wisconsin Great River Road is such a relaxing, engaging trip. Uh, You want to divide it up in doing the south, the central, the north. Look at our annual travel guide and pick your destination and things that you'd like to do because there is just something for everyone. And it's an open door to such a variety of adventures. I mean, you have to ask yourself, are you a foodie? Are you a birder? Do you want water adventure? Are you bringing your pet or your grandchildren? And all of those things are possible and really just make memories. That's what this is about. Well said, Sherry. You know, I agree. The best kind of road trip is one that gets everyone excited about something to see or do. And Sherry's so right. The Wisconsin Great River Road offers something that every single person in your travel party is going to want to experience. There are so many stops that are going to wow you, and you're definitely going to leave with some great memories. So Sherry mentioned that delicious pie. You are going to remember the first bite to your last bite from Stockholm Pie. You might feel like you were in a winery that was plucked out of Italy at Villa Beliza. Uh, you could discover the birthplace of a favorite famous author at the Laura Ingalls Wilder Museum. It's got scenic overlooks for those picture-perfect moments, boutique places to spend the night, so many memory-worthy stops along every mile. Amanda and Sherry, thank you so much for joining me for another Wandering Wisconsin. Thanks for having us. Thank you so much, and let the adventures begin. Amanda Weibel is a communications officer for Travel Wisconsin, and Sherry Kwame is the chairperson of the Wisconsin-Mississippi River Parkway Commission. They both joined Lake Effect's Becky Mortensen for our series, Wandering Wisconsin. You can find more trip recommendations at wuwm.com. If you aren't quite ready to plan a multi-day trip along the Great River Road, there are lots of day trips from Milwaukee to explore the many unique sites Wisconsin has to offer. Less than an hour outside of the city, you can find one such site in Menominee Falls. Redner's Rescued Cat Figurine Museum. That's right, museum. The cleverly named gallery is a pet project for founder Sean Redner, who donates all of the admission funds to rescue cat organizations. Lake Effects Joy Powers spoke with Redner to learn more. Tell us a bit about uh, how you came up with the idea for this museum. The museum itself wasn't actually supposed to happen. This all came out of me finding sobriety and needing something to do. So I had a lot of free time after I stopped drinking, so I started hunting for cat figurines at the various uh, thrift shops. And eventually I had enough cabinets full that I decided it would be a great idea to try to help use the museum to help the cat rescues in the neighborhood. And that's when I said to my wife, I got a great idea. We're going to open the house to the public one day a month. We're going to ask for a $5 donation, and then we're going to donate the money away. So the museum itself was never the intention when the first few figurines were purchased. What is it that you like about cat figurines? Well, we have nine rescue cats, 
but the cat figurines themselves have their own unique personality and some of them have a lot of history behind them. So it just, you know, kind of went along with the cat rescues and the cats that we have. So a, a, a lifelong commitment to cats. No, it actually started when I moved to Milwaukee in 2008. The previous tenant had left her cats in the duplex I moved into, so I kind of just fell into the cat world on accident. Interesting. Had you been uh, a fan of cats previously? I didn't really care or just, you know, dislike them. They were just kind of there. (laughs) Sure. So if someone comes to the cat museum, what are they going to see there? Oh, we currently have roughly about 3,500 pieces of cat-related art, sculptures, wood carvings, cat figurines, cat dolls, cat light switch covers, if you name it, and it looks or resembles a cat, it's in the museum. There's really no limit to what you will see here if cat-related. There's artwork, crocheting, a needlepoint, anything cat-related has found a home here at the museum. What do you think people would be most surprised to see at the museum? Both the amount of stuff and how actually, how clean it is. <laughs> we get that a lot. Like, I cannot believe you guys have nine cats here. Sure. Now, as you look around your collection of the many figurines, the art, all of the cat-related accoutrement, what sticks out to you the most? What are the pieces that you like the best? So I like the stuff that have people's signatures on it or their names. We have a picture of a black cat and a mime together, and on the back of it is a, a note to somebody's mother about Happy Mother's Day. So when we find things, because most of the stuff in the museum has been donated or comes from secondhand shops, when we find stuff that has a personal attachment to it, we tend to gravitate to liking that stuff more than your everyday one of the no cat figurines. Sure. Now, you're currently just open one day a month, is that right? Correct. We have one official open house a month, which falls on the third Sunday of each month, and that is from 11 to 5, where no appointment is necessary. But we also open, open by appointment Monday through Friday from 5 to 8 p.m. and any time on the weekend after 11. What's your biggest piece of advice for people who are interested in checking out the museum? Just give me a call. We will open the doors. We want to share this place with as many people as possible. The more people we can get in here, the more that we can donate back to the cat rescues. All right. How how much have you been able to donate so far? Um, last year, we donated a little less than $2,000 is what the museum raised. How much would you like to donate? Oh, it millions. There's never enough money in cat rescue. We, but this was our second open house today, and we're off to a pretty good start. So, I mean, we can never, never donate enough money to them. All right. Well, Sean, thank you so much for joining us here on Lake Effect and sharing your work. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Sean Redner is the founder of Redner's Rescued Cat Figurine Museum in Menominee Falls. He spoke with Lake Effect's Joy Powers last April when the museum was featured in Milwaukee Magazine. The Republican National Convention is coming to Milwaukee in July. You can help shape our coverage by filling out our election survey. You can find a link to that at wuwm.com. What you tell us will help inform the stories that you hear on Lake Effect and WUWM. We'll take one more break and then return with a song and a conversation with folk singer Willie Carlisle for the latest episode of Live at Lake Effect. That's next on 89.7 WUWM, Milwaukee's NPR. This is Lake Effect on 89. 89-